What is up, beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So, it is December in St. Louis, so we are in the shop again. The chopper's right there, other chopper is over there, and I know you guys haven't seen it in a few months, but the Indian is back in the shop. It was at my house. As I said in the last video, it was totally dead because I forgot to unplug my phone charger. So I got that all charged up, brought up here, and I need to get some stuff done on that. That's not happening today. So today, we are replacing another stock Har Harley carburetor with a Amazon carburetor. I did that on this chopper right here, and when I did that, I caught a lot of hate, right? And that's because most Harley owners peaked in high school, much like Al Bundy. And because they peaked in high school, their ego rests in things like what brand motorcycle they ride. And anything that deviates from that just really hurts their ego. I don't give a damn. I am a mechanic by trade. I like things that work. And it is cheaper to get a Amazon carburetor that comes with several upgrades already done to it than to rebuild that stock carburetor. People told me that that carburetor wouldn't work and it was a piece of crap and this and that. Well, this chopper right here, which I'm getting ready to start, cold start in fact, look, let's grab the exhaust, ice cold, has not ran in probably two or three weeks. And I've put several thousand miles on this bike with that carburetor on there and it runs great. So just crack the throttle twice, pull the choke. This key's a little messed up, so. Yeah, the key, the entire cylinder's trying to spin, so. Look at that. Bike fires right up, runs like a champ, but everybody said, not everybody, some of you came and walked away with some good information on something that may help you. But the people who only ride their bikes three miles a week to the bar, and back said that it would never work. Well, people like me who actually ride their bikes will tell you that it does in fact work. So today I'm gonna to show you how I set up a carburetor and what works for me. This may not work for you, and this is what will work for a 1200cc Sportster. So let's throw the camera on the tripod and I will show you guys how I like to set up a carburetor. I do have a couple extras here. So we have the Amazon carb. I have a choke relocation kit and a air fuel mixture adjuster. So again, I'm going to throw you guys on the tripod, but before we do that, give this video a big thumbs up, comment below, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and ring that little notification bell so you can keep up with all my projects. Let's get into setting this carb up. Okay, so I have my carburetor sitting here, my original carb. All we're going to do is we're going to remove this choke cable. So I've got some pliers here. We're going to loosen this little nut. And there's the choke. So we're going to pull that out. This I'm going to set aside. At some point I will run it through my ultrasonic, put all new seals new choke cable on it, and I will probably take it to a swap meet or put it on Facebook Marketplace. So, Amazon carburetor. This is how it comes. I've done nothing with this yet. As you see, still wrapped up. Let's open it up. Get a fuel filter. Probably not going to use that. Get the carburetor. And one spark plug. I don't know what they plan on doing with one spark plug. The other one came with two, but this one came with one. So we're going to throw that spark plug away because you should only be using Denso or NGK spark plugs. I know people, go, people are going to be like, what about Harley-Davidson spark plugs? They're probably made by Denso or NGK. Do not use cheap spark plugs. Use good spark plugs. Comes with a jet kit. This right here, if you were to buy these jets individually, they would cost you about $5 a piece. So it's nice that it comes with a jet kit. fuel hoses, and the carburetor, which has a hose for the drain on there. I'm going to pull that off. So, with this carb, like I said, this is cheaper than rebuilding the stock carb. This thing's, I think, 
The first one I paid 60 for. This one I believe I paid 45 for, but it's the same same exact thing. And it comes with the brass inlet. Uh, the stock CV carbs came with a plastic inlet, and they were known for breaking. I think the last couple years of the CV carb, it may have came with a brass, but vast majority of CV carbs are going to have a plastic inlet unless somebody has replaced it with a brass. So, let's go ahead, unscrew that nut. So it actually comes with a new choke in there. It just doesn't come with a cable, which is a little bit odd, but whatever. We're just going to take the factory choke, toss that to the side. Take our cable, put that on. So, because of the cable running in there and this plastic boot, it does give you a little bit of a fit trying to turn this. Sometimes the whole thing wants to start turning, but it's, it's easy. Okay, so that is on. It does have a vacuum plug over the vacuum port. If you are running a stock Harley ignition with a Vose sensor, then you'll just take that off and your Vose vacuum line will go there. If you're running an aftermarket ignition or points that does not utilize Vose, then you just leave that plug on. Let me grab a screwdriver. The next thing we're going, we're going to do is we're going to pull the bowl off and see what jets it came with. When you take these off, make sure you put good downward pressure. You don't want to strip these screws out. I see that on carburetors all the time. And you just want to make sure you're not stripping those out. So I... I find carburetors very simple. A lot of people seem to have trouble with them. So to me, they're simple. The concept is simple. Cleaning and fixing them is simple. But some people struggle with it. A lot of people struggle with it. So I don't know what to tell you guys there. Um, I'm a very mechanically inclined person. If I can take something apart, I can see how it works. I can't really tell you how I'm able to do that. It's just I've been that way since I was a child. So, if you're a person who uh, struggles with mechanical things, this may not be the task for you to take on, but it, it's really not that difficult. Okay, we're going to slide the bowl off. Okay, let me grab a flathead screwdriver so we can see what jets we have. Okay, it looks like they have a 170 in here. sticking in the body there, so we're just going to put that with a pair of pliers. There we go. That jet will now come out. So it had a 170, and I'm going to assume it probably has a 42 or a 45 right here. So this 170 and this 145, your bike could run on these. Not could, your bike will run on these. I like to run my bikes a little bit fatter. So what I tend to run in mine, where's my jet kit, is a 180 and a 48. I found that I like how the bike runs with those. And I get rid of that little CV cough and uh, I don't have any kind of backfiring or anything. So here's a 180. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. When you tighten these, be careful, they're brass. So you can snap them. You don't have to go real tight with them. Just want to be snug. Let's see. And then there's a 48. So I'm going to drop that 48 in there. Because of emission standards, the, they tend to run these bikes quite a bit leaner from the factory. And I found it leads to a lot of popping. And so just, if you fatten them up, they tend to be happy. 
but you don't want to go too fat. I wouldn't really go any bigger than this 180 and this 48 on a stock engine. So I, I do have a high flow air cleaner and uh, free flowing exhaust on my bike as well. So let's go and put the bowl back on. Make sure the accelerator pump, which is this rod right here. Let's make sure this goes in where it's supposed to. Put our screws back in, close this up. Okay, now you don't have to do this part, but I am replacing this air fuel screw with a toolless one. I like those, so on the fly, say uh, here at St. Louis, I think we're at like 500 feet above sea level. So if I'm out west or out east and I'm in the mountains, then that way I can uh, adjust on the fly if I need to. So this is still a good part, so I'm not going to get rid of that. I'll hold on to it. But um, The last one of these I bought, I bought from CV Performance. This one I got on Amazon. I think I paid like $6 for it. And the CV Performance one is something like, I want to say 25 So I guess it's a knockoff carburetor. Let's put a knockoff part in it. So this comes with a new O-ring and washer. Normally I would replace those, but being that this is a brand new carb, I'm just going to leave the stock O-ring and washer in there. I'm take that. I'm going to thread this in until it lightly seats. You don't want to crank it down because you could destroy the tip of the adjuster. Okay, once that's there, I like to take a Sharpie and make a mark just so when I'm adjusting, I know where I'm at. Of course, the Sharpie is about dead. Let me grab my other one. And the reason I do this reference mark is so when I'm doing adjustments, so base adjustment, it's a little bit debated. Some people will say two turns from bottomed out. Some will say two and a half. I tend to go two and a half. So with that mark, it's easy. So there's one turn, two turns, and a half. Once I get it on the bike, if the bike is running a little fat or fatter than I would like or idling a little too high, or then I can adjust that screw and get it where I want. But that's just a starting position. And we're going to install the relocation bracket. Every company has a different way of doing this. Um, find the one that you like or the one that fits your budget and just go with that. I don't I don't care. This one was from Lowbrow. It's from Gasbox. I think I paid maybe five or six bucks for it. You don't have to relocate your choke cable. I just like it by my air cleaner. I don't like it on the other side of the bike. So we're going to go ahead and take these two screws out. It comes with all uh, with four new screws for the top. choke situated in there and the ones this came with are allen so let me figure out what size allen i need for that okay so this one utilizes a 3 30 second allen we're not running this down we're just getting it started maybe put a little bit of loctite on those and then let's tighten that nut right there for our choke and then the choke functions and that right there is how I set up my CV carbs. So even if you had a factory Harley carb and you wanted to set it up how I set mine up, this is how I do it. It'll work the same on a factory carb. Again, this is only for a Sportster 1200. Um, I, I actually run the same uh, jetting on 883s. I've never had an issue with it. It's a bit fat. Yeah, you're not going to get the optimal fuel economy. You're not going to get the optimal power, but it, it's not enough of a difference to really notice, and it's it's a good, safe uh, setting to run at, so you're not going to be uh, melting pistons, which often happens with carbureted bikes that people don't pay attention to. All right, so that is how I set up my CV carbs. Um, I would normally put it on the bike and show it to you guys running. I guess I'll have to create a short or something when that happens. 
because I don't have any oil lines plumbed yet. So this week the engine and everything is coming out. The frame I'm going to paint and then next month the tins will go off to be painted. Um, other than that, the bike is pretty much done. I still need to wire it. I did get some stuff on uh, Black Friday. I uh, got some gold spark plug wires. I was going to make my own wiring harness, but throttle addiction, look how tiny this wiring harness is. I will show this to you guys when we wire the bike, but throttle addiction has this tiny, tiny little harness that's made just for their hardtail kits. And it is probably half the size of the Sportster treatment that I used on that bike. So once I get the bike running, I will share all that with you guys. But I'm not concerned at all with the Amazon carbs. Um, I will be at Mama Tried the weekend of February 18th in Milwaukee. I'm staying at the Iron Horse. I'll be at all the parties. So if I see any, if I see any of you or any of you see me, come up to me, talk to me. And... Uh, you know, we can have a beer together and party together. Uh, last year when I went, I was filming the whole time. I didn't really get to enjoy the show the way I would have liked to. This time, I'll film some stuff, but I'm really, I'm going up there to party and have fun. It's going to be my little winter vacation after the busy season here at work. We have just been absolutely busy. In the last week, I have packaged over 400 orders. It's just been crazy. This is our busiest time of the year here. So... I guess that's going to kind of wrap this video up. If you guys can give me a big thumbs up, comment below, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, ring the notification bell so you can keep up with the projects, and in the description box there is a link to all of our social media as well as our company website, hotheadsouls.com, where we make and sell everything for horses, and we have a 5% off discount code. So if you own a horse, or if you know somebody who owns a horse, we make all kinds of custom tack right here in the United States. Again... I love you all. I will see you in the next one. I'm out of here.